Okay, we come to the last chapter of this semester, chapter eight. Quite a long chapter. Uh, this section we will learn how to plot, how to monitor quality of your products by using statistics uh, data or some graph. Uh. Okay. Okay. So all this you read lah. Uh. What is quality? What is fitness for you? So it's quality of design. All this lah. Huh? So if you look at the diagram, you see that these two white car or automotive actually uh, they look similar. They look quite similar. The design quite look quite similar. But they cater for different segment of uh, market. Uh, on the top is Mercedes Benz, and the lower one is Ford. So both they design for different performance, and different needs of customers. Okay. So these are the dimension for quality. Every time you go into, if you have chance to go into manufacturing industry, so and then you walk into the QA department. Most of the time. They you need you will hear all these keyword lah, performance, reliability, and so on. Okay. The previous slide, this slide is show on the manufactured products. So you will see dimension of quality is one to nine. A bit different if you mention uh, quality in term of services. Huh? So products, physical products will be different from services. So it will be from one to seven. Okay, it will be from one to seven. So don't confuse if the question asks you dimension for quality for manufactured products, you don't use the one that in this slide. Lah. So there are two different dimensions. Lah. One is for services, one is for physical products. And this one is. Um, Another one from the pro producer or from the pro, uh, from the factory perspective, yeah, quality, yeah. So they will use the word quality of conformance. Quality of conformance is make sure that the products behave as what you design, uh, produce according to design conformance. So for example, um, tires, new tires do not conform to specification; they will be wobbled, right? So for hotel room. If they are not clean, then they are not conformance. They don't have quality of conformance and so on. Huh? Okay. So a final perspective of quality is this chart. So this chart also um, sometimes is important. Uh, if the question asks you what is the meaning of quality, illustrate the meaning of quality by uh, support your answer with uh, a chart, right? So this is what you expected in your answer. Lah. So meaning of quality, we have two areas, producer and consumer. So producer is a factory side, consumer is the one that buy the products, right? So they have quality of conformance is under producer. Consumer, they will look for quality of design. Producer on the left-hand side will be production. Production will fit into the quality and marketing will fit into the quality of design. At the end, it will put me into fitness for consumer use. Okay. Okay, the rest you read. Okay, so this is a management system. Uh, here are some uh, popular people or some uh, right author that is very famous in uh, quality management system. So these are the gurus, uh, name of the gurus, Joseph Joran, uh, Deming, Edward Deming, um, and so on. Uh. So there are few. So you read uh, what are their contribution. Okay. So these are the a few people. Uh. A few people with this popular in quality management. So one of it is Deming. Deming philosophy with this guy. 
at what that mean? This one. His idea of quality management have 14 points. Huh? Have 14 points. So have a look in this table and then uh, try to understand what does it mean. Lah. So got 14. So got 14 points. Usually 14 will ask you to memorize seven out of these 14. Okay. So this one you read. Lah. So I read. Okay. So that mean beside his uh, 14 philosophy, 14 points of philosophy, he also famous for this circle. Right? Four, four stage process for continuous quality improvement. So this one is on the internal control. All right. So when you manage a project, you need to monitor and control. So this Damien proposed these four main uh, stages for continuous quality improvement. Plan, do, check, and act. Plan, do, check, and act. Huh? Uh, if you go to work later and you dealing with quality, they will mention P, D, C, A. This P, D, C, A expand to other names. Huh? So quality tools, what are they? You can use flowchart. Process flowchart, process one, go to process two, go to process three, and so on. Okay. Detail elaboration is on the slides. The second one is cost and effect diagram. It look like fishbone. So sometimes this cost and effect diagram also called fishbone diagram. Then checklist is quite normal, uh, checklist. Uh, fish and bone, all the detail is there. Fish bone usually used for band strumming and finding the if the the cost that contribute to the problems. Right? So this these slides that you see is for the hospital turnover, bed turnover problems. So they will have all these uh, cost and effect. Uh, on the left hand side, then you pointing towards the problems. In this module, I won't ask you how to use fishbone, right? But sometimes, uh, if you go to a manufacturing company and you assign as a uh, intern or what, normally you will need to fill in this fishbone. But if you go to a, a multinational company, this one already inside the software already. Okay, you need to check the data. Another one is in the table form, for example, this one in the table form. So there's a input and output, input and output, then you rank accordingly right. right so this one also uh, expected in your project report huh? you need to create uh, a rubrics that uh, explain why you choose that design okay this sample is for hospital scenario huh? don't use this all this uh, wording in your project huh? you are you are look you are doing a uh, work walk along glider in your in your report if you mention emergency department prediction time uh, then you are not doing your work this is called cause and effect matrix huh? so cause and effect in your scenario you might facing a problem like why the walk, walk along cannot fly, fly in straight line. So you do analysis. Huh? What is the input? What is the output? Huh? Okay. Okay, go and do some research how to develop this one. Huh? Checklist is quite normal. So checklist 
if you go to a very complex working environment, uh, they always have a checklist, right? Uh, in uh, aerospace, uh, for example, uh, any every pilot before they take off, there will be a checklist. Uh, even before the landing also have a checklist. Okay, so another one is called Pareto analysis. Pareto, they give you, uh, you need to do Pareto analysis for this module. Uh, there will be one question ask you to do Pareto analysis. What mean by Pareto? Y axis is percentage of defect. Then your X axis is all the problems. Okay. Uh, later, I'll give you one example how to do this one. Histogram. Histogram we rarely use uh, for this module, but you should know what is histogram. Okay. Histogram is plotting frequency versus the component. Okay, so Pareto analysis, you we train you to find out the causes why poor quality happen. Okay, so either it will come out in your test tool or you come out in the final exam. Right, so we have given you a, a, a big raw data. You need to analyze what happened to the process. Is it custom? Is this is it your worker problem or is it a machine problem? If your machine problem, what you need to advise? These are the example. Uh, this is based on Joran, uh, one of the guru uh, example, right? So this one is to find the problems. Huh? Why? What contribute to the quality problems? Okay. So. You are seeing this uh, table as a raw data. For example, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven reason why uh, there's a bit bit problems. Always no not in, not enough bit, and every patient every time patient go into the hospital, the counter will say we don't have any more bit and so on. Right. So these have the second column will be number of defect and percentage. Huh? So you should know how to get percentage. Huh? You should be able to understand why 64% from this table. How you get 64? You take 83 divided by 130, multiply 100, you get 64%. Okay. So you transfer the data into Pareto graph or Pareto chart. Y axis always the, your problem, percentage of problems or potential uh, poten uh, percentage of defect. So here you convert numbers into percentage. So for example, you plot staff communication 64% uh, on the left. Then it will go from high to low. Okay. Uh, any question on Pirato? Noah? Yeah. So when you see this chart, you know that most of the problem is because of the communication problem, for example, this case. Okay. Another one, a scattered diagram. This one, you are, I think you are expert already uh, since you, you already handle most of the experimental data. Um, this one, you've seen lots of time in your actual spreadsheet. Okay. And in this module, you need to convert scattered data into statistical process control chart, means from Pirato transfer into statistical process control. Uh, later, we'll go deep into this procedure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for statistical process data chart, you we are considering three important line. One is the median mean data. From the mean data, there's a calculation. There is a delta 
for upper control line. This is control line, upper control line. This is lower control line. So there is a plus and negative delta. So you draw the line. Okay. And statistical process data is very uh, convenient. As long as your data is fall be within the UL, UCL and LCL, means you are in control. If your data go outside the two line, means you are moving towards uh, control. Okay. Okay, scatter data. This one is very famous in the industry. Um, we call TQM, Total Quality Management. Total Quality Management consists of one, two, three, four, five. Consumer, continue improvement steps, quality, your evaluation, and also your stakeholders or employees. Okay, so these are the things. Uh, uh, and what is QMS, quality management system? So one is TQM, total quality management and quality management system. Uh, so one is system, one is the total, how you manage your quality. Okay, so again, Damien 14 points philosophy, the Damien 14 points in the previous slides, it come into, uh, it, people use Damien 14 points to develop the TQM, the TQM total quality management uh, basic principle. So these, these are the basic principles, huh? one to eight, go and read. Huh? Go and read all these things. Okay, quality cycle is, this is quality cycle. So you can start from organization, then go into training, go to identify the problems. When you identify the problem, you need to do analysis. After your analysis, you need to give solution, then your presentation, and then back to organization. Same as your project management. Huh? Your project management, uh, for your project uh, uh, management, I mean for the work along glider project, you also uh, start from organization, which is from your lecturer. Then you go to trainings. We give you how to manage your projects and all this. Then I give you a problems, the work along glider problems. Then you need to do analysis, what actually, how to make the work along glider fly. Then you give solution. You build prototypes and then you test it. So you present what have you done uh, in week 11. This is week number nine. You still have one more week plus to do your presentation. Okay. Okay, the rest you read. Huh? Another word is called Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a quality tools, a quality control tools um, used in nowadays most of the uh, MMC, multi. Uh, what, uh, a multi, uh, those big company, uh, this big company. Uh, most famous one is Motorola. Uh, so I think you should heard before the name of Motorola. Six Sigma was developed and used by Motorola. They are the first company implement Six Sigma. And then this Six Sigma uh, grow into other industry. Okay, so what is Six Sigma? Again, statistics. Huh? You know that your statistics, you know, have normal distribution. You know that you can break into three sides when you learn your hypothesis, customer satisfaction, or the rate or percentage whether your project pass or fail. You learned before already. So, Previously, we introduced you the six segment. This segment is one sigma. So this is uh, one sigma. This is two sigma, four sigma, six sigma. Okay. So if you control up to six sigma, which is from here 
go here. The error in your process is very, very small. Six Sigma cover most likely 99 point something percent. So this through six sigma, the objective is to decrease in process variation leads to zero defect. Zero defect. So what does it mean by zero defect? For example, a piece of work with a hole. This hole center line must be Three mm from the edge, and the diameter of that one will be maybe z, maybe one mm. Okay, so if the company use six sigma what will happen to your orders it means there will be plus minus plus minus in the qa department you send them maybe the qa will be micron 0 0.01 mm plus minus means one shift of one mm if your error shift uh, more than 0 0.01 mm, they will reject the whole lot. Uh. We're talking about one lot is one million piece. So it's going to have a uh, disaster uh, in your production guy. Uh. Okay. Uh, so they will be very strict in the qualities. Uh. They want to make sure every time they fit this hole into the motherboard or something, they're able to screw it using robotic arm. Every time robotic arm go to that exact location, they can push in the screw directly. Okay, so this is six sigma. Uh, so it can after uh, if you go to maybe your internship later, if you go to Motorola, you go to those uh, Intel. Um, you will see they they actually they are applying six sigma. Okay, then every day uh. Motorola guy, they will go and scold the vendors. Always reject, reject, reject. Why? Because they are so, uh, they want to reduce until zero defect. Okay. Uh, name Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese word. Kaizen also one of the uh, tools they use. Right. So Kaizen, it means involve everyone in the process of continuous improvement, uh, plan, do, study, or analysis, and then action. PDS, PDCA, right? PDCA. So Six Sigma, they use the philosophy of uh, karate or taekwondo, I forget right there. Right. They start from white belt until black belt. Okay. Process. They define the process. They measure the process. They analyze the process, and then they control the process. Okay. So they define, measure, analyze, improve. Then they control the process. So all these things. The highest rank in the Six Sigma training is black belt black belt is the one who at the leader as a leader of that projects uh, so if you want to uh, work in all these uh, um, uh this uh, big company you can you go and get a uh, six sigma uh, certification for project management usually those the uh, project manager they will have training up to black belt level Okay, those GM general managers, most of the time they already have black belt certification. Okay, so this is one of the criteria. Um, 
even though you go to the interview, you say that you have a, you have an introduction of a Six Sigma certificate before, they will also give priority to you because you know how to, you understand the process of uh, SPDC, uh, PDCA. You know how to define process, you know how to measure, you know how to analyze, you know how to improve, and then you know how to control. Okay, so these are the mean the meaning of sigma. Okay, so these are where is the positive sigma, negative sigma. Okay. Uh. So these are the certification, white, yellow, green belt. And you have a if you're interested, you can go and read about this Six Sigma belt system. It's quite, um, it's quite valuable. Uh. This certificate is quite valuable if you want to work in the manufacturing setup company. Okay. Quite valuable. Uh, sort of, uh, a skill that's sought after in the, in the, in the industry. Okay, so Six Sigma follow four four different philosophy: align, mobilize, accelerate, and govern. So these four keywords: align, mobilize, accelerate, and govern. So this one you read for my slides. What are the align? What is mobilize? What is accelerate? What is govern? Okay, define, measure, analyze, improve, control. So what are the process inside? Define, what measure, analyze, improve, and control. Another, another type of uh, quality management is called DMAIC. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control DMAIC approach. Okay, is this chart lah? So too many information. You go home and read. Too many information. Okay, so what kind of question can ask from these slides? You ask you, uh, about this one A back through strategy steps by using the acronym DMAIC. He asks you to explain what is DMAIC breakthrough strategies, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. We expect you to draw this uh, circle and also what are the point, key point for each of the process. Okay, so these are the answer. Lah. If the question asks you the Breakthrough strategies, DMAIC. So you write what is defined, what is measured, what is analyzed, what is improved, and what is controlled. Okay. Okay. So another word after people use Six Sigma, they will add something called Lean Six Sigma. Okay. Lean Six Sigma. Okay. Uh, why why this chapter was included? Uh, because we don't want to sh make you shame uh, when you go into the industry later. Uh, your boss asks you, hey, you know what is Six Sigma or not? Uh, if you say don't know, means something wrong with your degree program. Okay. Uh, okay. So you need to know all these uh, keywords. At least you heard before. What is Six Sigma? What is uh, uh, this uh, TQM and all these things? Uh? At least you know, you heard before. Huh? Lean Six Sigma is a combination of two, um, two main skills. Six Sigma, we already explained, reduce defect. Six Sigma, the main objective is to reduce defect by solving problems. This one using stat statistical data, Six Sigma. If you add the word lean, lean means reduce weight, uh, reduce waste. 
you look at waste, how you optimize your resources. When you add lean six sigma, these two work together, you combine lean process and six sigma process. So it will cover reduce defect plus you're considering how you reduce the weights in your process. Yeah. Lots of documentation uh, if you're in the QA department. Um, this one we've already discussed. Uh, FMEA failure mode effect analysis also part of the quality tools. If you run simulation nowadays, all the MCs, all the especially uh, SOLIDWORKS, uh, AutoCAD, uh, Rabbit, and all these things, they will be a section they will, can generate FMBA report. Okay, so because it's part of the quality control tools. Um, T-test is another one, but we don't cover a lot in T-test. T-test is, um, is also a tool. Uh, T-test, this one is uh, first developed by the alcohol company. It's a Guinness brewery to select the best beer they produce. Okay. Uh, then this one, uh, uh, SPC is the one that uh, will be come out in your exam. This one. Design of experiment is one module itself, means one subject itself. So, uh, but sometimes some lecturer or some professor, uh, they like to ask DOE in your FYP presentation. Okay, there will be one particular lecturer in mechanical. He like to ask question about this. Okay, not me, eh? Okay, so we have done with all the introduction of qualities, all these things. We go into this uh, SPC, right? At least you come out as an engineer, you know how to read uh, this uh, data generated by QA, then you can give advice, right? Although you don't need to go and plot the data, but at least you see the report, you know, or something wrong with the tooling, you need to do adjustment. That is the skill that we expect from you. Okay. Okay. Now we look into SPC. <clears throat> so SPC is like playing badminton or playing any any soccer game or any balls games. There is a inline and outline. As long as you are in inside the outline, you are safe. If you are play outside the outline or in outside the line, you are out control. Okay. So sample point outside limit, meaning upper limit, lower limit. If they are outside, means you are out of control. The process is out of control. Uh, if you are within the control limit, then you are okay. Okay. So the process can continue without interference, means you can just continue to monitor the process. Okay. Um, one idea or one thinking that uh, we want to um, highlight here, no production process produce exactly identical items. For example, this uh, hole here, all process, although in the same machine, because of the vibration and dynamics uh, factor, the hole will shift a little bit. It depends on how you control the the stamping process or laser cut machine, uh, the process. Okay, that's why in the technical drawing, we will have plus minus value there. Yeah, so when you go to work, you 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 take a project back to your companies, do study the plus minus. Uh. Usually, where is this plus minus in the technical drawing? Below the legend there. Read carefully, they will mention plus minus here. 
I highlight this one because I make mistakes last time in my first job. I take the object and I didn't, I give quotation and uh, forget to include this plus minus error in the, this one. I scolded very heavy, I scolded by my production guy. And also I scolded by my engineering department. So why you go and promise customers uh, so difficult projects like uh, one drawing is like 0 0.001 in the micron dimension. And we already signed a contract. So it can do, it's just that you make your production a bit heavy. Uh, your QC department need to work extra because out a little bit already, out already, the whole batch out. So uh, just be careful, lah, this one. Uh, if you go to uh, work later, just be careful on the plus minus things. Uh, Okay. Of course, if you if you're in the upstream, uh, you're in the upstreams, uh, you're at a high level decision makings, you want to always push for higher plus minus. Uh, you want to you want to improve your quality. Normally you improve the plus minus. Uh, but if you plus minus, the downstream guys will be very painful. Uh. So just just be careful lah, on this one. Okay. So what is attributes? Another word used in the qualities report is attributes. Attribute is a product characteristic that can be evaluated with a discrete response. Either is good or bad, uh, comply to the dimension or not, yes or no. Right. So like for example, surface texture, uh, cleanliness, Cleaners can become the coating of the, the surface. A smell or taste, right? Okay. Variable measures. Variable measure is product characteristic that can continuous, that is continuous and can be measured. For example, weight and length. So a uh, liquid. For example, liquid detergent in the plastic container can measure, see if it conform to the company's product spec. Uh, or the time it takes to serve a customer at McDonald's. So nowadays, all the fast food restaurants, not only McDonald's, um, they have a standards. Uh, every time you, you, you go to the kiosk nowadays to punch in and then you click pay, after you pay, you will print out the receipt. When the time you print out the receipt, uh, the, the time started from the kitchen side. So uh, if they serve you long enough, uh, I mean, the uh, as outside the, the time frame, then uh, maybe the espresso times, uh, uh, by the end of the years, that employees will handle some, some issues. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay. Control chart, this one, this is a control chart. So here, you know that this is a process control chart. We have a upper limit, lower limit. So by early detection here, you know that there's one point that is our control, All right? So there are two, uh, there are two purpose. Every time the question asks you this one, there are two purpose you need to answer. One, you, you should able to calculate the control limit. There's a calculation there to calculate the line on the top and the line below. This one, there's a calculation for control limit. Another one is to answer whether the process is in control or out control. You need to answer these two main questions. I mean, these two main points. Okay. Okay, so there will be uh, under this one. We have two types of chart, P chart and C chart, and the mean and the range control chart. Huh? So we will go into uh, uh, the first one first, because we don't have time. Okay, before you go into there, uh, this actually is a flip of your Six Sigma chart. You just turn to the 90 degree, the chart, huh? you're actually turning there. So six sigma, what is six sigma? Six sigma is 99.72%, you control the process. If 
uh, means three sigma. Three sigma. If the question say uh, the, the the process was controlled ninety nine point seven two percent, means you are using three sigma. You are using three sigma. Uh, means although it's the total is six sigma, but in your calculation you are actually considering three sigma on the left, three sigma on the right. I uh, remember that. Okay. So if the question mentioned ninety five. If the whole process control at 95.44%, then is two sigma. You use two sigma in your calculation. If the question mentioned 68.26%, then it's one sigma. Although the total length is one sigma on the left, one sigma on the right. Yeah. So we start to use the word Z uh, standard variation there. Okay, so so if that value is two, that value is two is ninety five percent. That is actually sigma. If sigma is two, then your normal probability, the total probability that you calculate is ninety five percent, ninety five point four four percent. If your z is Three, then you normal probability from one end to another end, the whole chart we are covering ninety nine point seven three percent. So if the company want to torture the downstream, you use the Z four. Z four means uh, eight six sigma. Eight sigma. Eight sigma means hundred percent. You cannot fail. But usually. Maximum three lah, uh, three or eight, nine point something percent. But we're talking about uh, manufacturing, like for example, this uh, screw hole, uh, one pieces there. So normally one lot is one million piece. You multiply one million piece is, you still have some defect. Uh. Even like zero point two, uh, zero point two percent. 0.2% uh, is 0.0020. Multiply million will have 2000 pieces probability of defect in 1 million lot. Uh, I hope you can link this data. Uh, so if you have six sigma, even you have six sigma, and in a lot of production of one million pieces, there is a probability of 2,000, about 2,000. Uh, I just roughly uh, increase the numbers. Uh, it's about um, <clears throat> 2,000 pieces in that one lot of uh, one, one million pieces of production pieces. Okay. Uh, and you don't want this 2000 to happen. Uh. You imagine you buy an iPhone, the latest iPhone. Because of this one pieces from 2000, uh, you get complaint from the customers. Then the whole brand destroyed. Yeah. You don't want, you want, do you don't want to take risk? Uh. Okay. Um, especially now today, um, I think last previous months you heard about EV cars, you heard about uh, some cases, you heard about the battery problems, you heard about some explosion uh, because of you, uh, some of it you do not control the battery uh, in the process. Okay. okay, if you understand what is that, how, what is the value of Z related to percentage of probability? Then we can start doing the exercise. Huh? Okay. The rest you read. Huh? I'll just go into how you, how you do or how you analyze the projects. Huh? First, how you know that it's in control. There are three criteria, uh, four criteria. Okay, there are four criteria. How you know it is in control. Point number one, all the samples points are inside the upper and lower limit. Most points are near the process average. So means all the this is average point. So most of the points are inside the 
uh, around the mean point. Approximate equal number of sample point occurred above and below the center line. So you will see if the process is in control, number of point above the middle line here will be equal to the almost equal, uh, almost equal to the number. Let's say it got five point up, uh, about four point below, then it's in the control. Okay. Then number four, all point appeared to be randomly distributed around the center. So mm -hmm. in, in some point they are up, some point they are down. Okay. Let's say you have a graph. Huh? And if you're having the point, if you're having the point like this, something wrong with your machine. Huh? Something wrong with your machine means a few point in front, the process is jump up. Then another uh, time after the process is jumped down. Something wrong with the machine. You need to do some adjustment. Okay, this is a, uh, you can say this, the one that I draw on the whiteboard here is quite control. Uh, it's quite control things. Means something maybe hanging or some spring mechanism already not working correctly already. Huh? Okay, the first type of the chart called P chart. P chart is proportional defective chart. Proportional is what? There is a fraction. You compare maximum value is one. Your numbers here is proportional defective, which is from zero point something to one. Okay, then still same, you have three point. Mean point, upper, lower limit. C chart is number of defective. C chart is your count, number of count. Right? So number of count will be one defect, two defect, three defect, four defect, and so on. Okay? Still, you're having the same three line, mean line, upper line, lower line. So there's a two different chart. Nah? Even though you're given the same raw data, don't plot the wrong chart. Nah. Sometimes the question asks you to plot P chart. Sometimes the question asks you to plot C chart. Don't plot the wrong one. Okay. So what is the purpose of plotting P chart? Again, P chart is proportional defective. The purpose is to distinguish between the defective and non-defective item. And then how many percent? of defective. These are the things, for example, in some process, proportional defective cannot be determined. Example, when counting number of blemish in the row of this material, it is not possible to compute the proportional. In this case, C chart will be required. Okay. For example, in the car manufacturer, the last process, Painting shop process. So there will be some spot that you you cannot count, right? You cannot count like uh where does uh where does this these things and then how many spot that is not sprayed by the machine. It cannot count. So but you can uh you, you cannot do proportional, but you can use C chart to do that. Huh? Okay, this one you read. There are some uh, precaution here. We read, huh? Okay, first equation for P chart and also C chart. For P chart, first equation to calculate the ULC, UCL will be average plus Z sigma P. LCL, lower limit, will be used the negative. Z sigma P. Z you already know. Z depends on what are the normal chart distribution you want to monitor. Okay. P is the average data. You know how to calculate average if you're given a, a pool of numbers. Um, this one, sigma P is standard variation. You should know how to calculate standard variation by now. Okay, so standard variation given by 
square root of p 1 minus p divided by n. So you take average bracket 1 minus bracket uh, 1 minus average divided by total of item inside your table. Okay. So these three general equation, please write. Uh, if the question asks you to plot C chart or P chart, please write this general equation. Don't straight away give me a number. I will circle, I will put question mark how you get this number. Okay. Now we will look at example one, then we stop, then we continue next lecture. All right. Next week. Okay. So a company producing jeans. The company wants to establish a P chart. To monitor the process flow uh, and maintain high quality. This company believes that approximate 99.74% of variability in the production process can be controlled, uh, it's random, means can be controlled. Uh, trust should be within control limit. So it gives you that they want to control 99.74%. So by reading this statement, you know the number of jack already. Z will be three because it's used three on the left, three on the right. Yeah. Where zero point two six percent of the process availability is not random. So this is if you take uh, zero point two six plus seven ninety nine percent for get hundred percent, which means if you plot the chart of a normal distribution chart. If you have negative three sigma here, three sigma here, you are actually controlling this one. The one that inside this chart is random. Outside this chart is non-random. Non-random, it can be human error. It can be uh, maybe the the workers is not feeling well that day. Uh, he fight his his wife yesterday, and then before come to work, he said just have no mood to do it. So. He, he sometimes the workers in bad mood, they don't care about plus minus things. They just dump the machine, then press start and then do. So this is non-random outside the 0.26%. 0, 0. Huh? Companies have taken 20 samples, one per day for 20 days. So 20 samples. So for 20 days. So one, one sample each day. Each containing 100 pairs of genes. So every sample it takes will have 100 genes. So it means it's two sampling. Every time you do one sampling, random pick from one lot, then measure 100 genes in this one, in this one sample. Okay, so your end number is 100 and inspect them for defect and result which as follow. So you're given a, a table. Proportional defects for po population is unknown. You need to calculate. The company want to construct a p-chart to determine where the production process might be out of control. So you're given this chart. Right? So you have sample 1 to 20. Means 20 days, right? 20 days each day, you take one, lot, uh, one sample, one sample. Then number of defective. So first day, within the 100 genes, you found six defects. Second day, 100 genes, every, every 100 genes looks okay, no defect. Third day, within the 100 genes, you find four defect and so on. So at the end, you get, uh, usually when come to question, I will remove this number. You need to calculate total defect in your answer. So you, you take 6 plus 0 plus 4 until the last number 18, you get 200. Okay. So proportional defects. Proportional defects. How you get 0 0.6? What do you think? How you get 0 0.6? By all the information. Do you take 200 or you take 100? To compare all these numbers. You are divided by what? 
100, right? So proportional defect is actually looking at every time you look at how many sample. This one, huh? don't confuse with the 200. Some of you, you confuse. For calculating proportional defect, you take from how many, how many items every time you do inspection. Uh, don't confuse with the word sample here. Okay. Um, in the exam, you need to build this column. Uh. You need to build proportional defect column. You need to calculate 200 here. You only see numbers. You only see samples. You only see numbers of defective. Then you need to build this column. Huh? Okay. So what is the average of total sample? Total defect, 200. Total sample observation, how many? What is the total sample of your observation? How many? Two thousand. Uh. So you need to write P bar or average P or average uh, defect. Will be total defect by the total item that you inspect. It's not two hundred. Uh. Don't confuse with two hundred again. Uh. Average, you are looking at number of defect by the total size of your inspection. So 200 divided by 2000, the P value mean is 0 0.1. So onto your chart, uh, when you build a chart, P chart, find the P bar first. Okay, so this usually will be zero. Lah. Then you build P. P can be positive, can be negative. Ah. P can be positive, can be negative. Um, okay, then because the P chart is proportional defective here, so you have a range of 0 0.6, uh, 0 until maximum number here, right? So you have zero, maximum number will be 0.2. So you agar agar lah in your P chart here. You start from zero and maximum will be 0 0.2 here. Then you plot in your data lah. So the first one, first inspection, sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four. Sample one, your pre, your proportional defect 0 0.6 ah. you plot lah 0 0.6 here lah. 0 0.6 2 0 here 3 0 0.4 here and so on you plot 20 point 20 dot okay. control limit by using this calculation Okay, so Z, you know, is three. The challenges here is finding the standard variation was given by square root of P bar bracket one minus P bar divided by N. So this one, you know, lah, calculator, you put in, press calculator, you get one value, 0 0.03, substitute back here. You calculate this one, substitute back here, Z is three. So you get positive negative value. Okay. Please show your working. Eh? Please show your working of numbers in your answer if this question come up. So you get your LCL equal to one value, UCL equal to one value. So you have UCL and LCL. UCL is 0 0.190 LCL is 0 0.010. Uh, if can go to three decimal place, uh, three decimal place. So 
you go to your graph and find where is uh, 0 0.01. So 0 0.01, you draw one line, label LCL, go to one line, 0 0.19 is about here, you label UCL. So on your graph, you have three important lines, huh? P bar, LCL, UCL. Okay, you should show something like this, right? Then you uh, join the join the line, uh, join the line, join the dot with a straight line. Okay. Uh, if you ask uh, Dr. Ang, if I forget to draw the connecting line for the dot, can or not? Uh, actually, can uh. Actually, can. Huh? So if you forgot to draw the line, uh, I will also give you pass. Uh, because the main purpose here is to see whether the process in or out control. Okay, Whether you draw the straight line or not draw, to me, it doesn't matter. Okay, so from here, uh, anyone you don't know how to arrive at it here? Anyone you don't know? You, you, or you're confused? Uh, it's quite straight. Uh, uh, it's like a plotting a graph. Okay, my next question is how many process? Uh, there are two objectives uh, of uh, plotting p-chart, right? One, you should know your upper limit, lower limit uh, to control your, to see whether in control or what. Second one, you need to answer whether this process in control or out control. So first you look at the line, the two line. How many dot outside the line? Two, right? So in your answer, you need to mention two point was outside the control line. Two point, then you mention what point? This point, which is at sample number two, and point number 19. <clears throat> 19, not 19. Uh, yeah, 19 was outside the control. Mention how many points outside? Okay. Then the process is in general is in control, but you need to answer do we show tendency to fail or not? Do we show tendency to fail or not? So there are two, there are few, few behavior. One, if you showing the data up, down, up, down just now, uh, there's a four criteria that's in control. So if it's meet all the criteria, then it's in control. But you see this kind of data is either go to one direction or go towards this direction. So if the arrow is pointing diagonal up, it means what? It's going towards what? UCL. Huh? If the arrow, I'm not arrow, if the train of the dot is going below, diagonal go down, is going LCL. You need to mention the trend. In your answer, we're looking for, are you able to detect the train, the trend? So in this data, this example one, the data is moving towards where? Towards UCL. So you need to write, the, the data is moving towards UCL, although currently is still in control. However, some adjustment need to, uh, some measurement or some uh, control measure must be uh, employed or must be applied to the system so that the, the, the data can shift back to normal distribution. Why? The machine, uh, you can see uh, the machine from day one is over here, but until the day 20, he already shift up, outside here. If you do not do anything to the machine, the dot will go outside the UCL. It's moving towards this direction. So you need to do some adjustment to the machine. Okay. <clears throat> so these are the expected answer. Right. Uh, process below uh, this one. Then something was wrong huh? something was wrong so you say it can preserve a good result but something is wrong so you want to know uh, if no no problem with the inspection process 
management would want to know what caused the quality process to improve. So there's something wrong. There's something wrong with this process, right? Uh, um, so a solution may be perhaps better, uh, uh, better material. You get better material from the su new supplier that week or different. Uh, the, the, the problem uh, may be because of the raw material you take in from your vendors in that particular lot, something wrong with the raw material. Or maybe the operator, the, the operator that worked that machine, maybe something wrong with the operator. So you need to do, if the, if the factory is using automation machine, uh, automated system, then something wrong with the box, something wrong with the precision things. Uh, okay, so the rest you read, lah, the rest you read, da, da, da. Um, so this one is, is, uh, was, uh, okay, so this one are the solution. Uh. You can give the reason why uh, this one happened. So maybe operator, material, and also, uh. then upward trend. You mentioned, you need to mention the trend uh, in your answer, either upward or downward trend. Okay. Um, so this one, uh, uh, need to pre some precaution step that you alert the operator to make correction during the process. Okay, we continue C chart in next lecture. Okay, I hope you able to, who haven't signed, uh, sign your attendance. Uh. Okay, we end our lecture here. I'll see you guys next week.